This video lesson is about introduction to sequence. Now, as we start, let me show you some pictures. Okay, tingnan ngayon ang mga pictures at hanapin ang pattern kung paano sila nabuo. Pattern, ibig sabihin, paano na, nagsimula sa una, then sa pangalawa, then sa pakatlong object ng isang picture. So, tingnan muna natin si picture A. So, makikita nyo, may 1, may 3, may 5. Yun yung number or bilang ng mga bilog or tawag natin ay pips sa isang die. Kung titingnan natin yung pattern, ano ba nangyari dun sa 1, 3, and 5? Malamang marami sa inyo magsasabi na may plus 2 para maging 3, then plus 2 magiging 5, then ano kaya yung pang 4? Siyempre, 7. Tingnan naman natin ngayon yung picture sa letter B. So, ang bibilangin natin, yung power slots. So, yung una, merong 4, may 3, then may 2. So, kung tatanawin kayo, ano nangyari, malamang ang sagot ay nagbawas ng isa. Pero, pwede rin yun sabihin na plus negative 1, 3 plus negative 1, 2. So, yung susunod ay 1. Tingnan naman ngayon sa letter C. Merong number na 1, 2, tsaka 4. So, ano naman kaya yung pattern? May malamang, uh, may sagot na times 2. So, magiging 2 times 2, magiging 4. So, yung pang-apat na uh, term will be 8. Sa letter D, ang dapat nyo sanang nakita yung numbers or yung halaga ng bawat paper bill. So, that would be 500, 120. So, ano kaya nangyari? Malamang sabihin ng iba sa inyo, dinivide sa 5. Tama rin naman, pero mas tamang sabihin ang times 1 fifth. So, 500 times 1 fifth, 100 times 1 fifth. That's 20. So, ano kaya yung 20 times 1 fifth? So, parang dinivide mo rin ng 5, which is 4. So, yun ang pattern. Now, paano natin nakukuha yung mga susunod na terms? Pwede raw tayong mag-add or mag-multiply ng n. N ang ginamit kasi pwede kahit anong value yan. Pero pwede tayong mag-add or multiply. Uh, what do we add to get the next term? Pwede tayong mag-add ng positive n, pwede rin na negative n. Pero tandaan natin na pag nag a tayo ng negative n, para kang nagsusubtract. Ano daw ang trend na nakikita kapag daw yung n ang idinagdag? Yung mga terms pataas. Paano naman kung negative n ang inad? Yung mga terms pababa or decreasing terms. Next. Ano naman daw ang trend kapag n ang minultiply sa mga terms? Syempre, pataas yung mga terms. Pag 1 over n ang minultiply, nagiging pababa or parang nangyayari, pareha sila ng division. Paano kapag negative n ang minultiply? Hindi natin ginawa sa mga examples, pero Lagyan natin ng panahon para isipin. Naisip mo na ba? Yung magkakaroon ng alternating signs. Oo. So, kunwari, example dyan, may 1. Paano pag tinime sa negative 2? So, negative 2. Paano yung negative 2? Itatime sulit sa negative 2, magiging 4. So, on and so forth. So, for the first example, uh, that is read as 2 plus 3 times 5. So, alam natin dapat na pag may quantity, that should be uh, multiplication. So, ano bang uunahin? Yung 2 plus 3 ba? O yung 3 times 5? Dapat alam natin na uunahin muna ang multiplication sa order of operation. So, that will be 2 plus 15 or 17. For example, number 2, you will have 2 times 3 plus 5. So, multiply again before addition. So, you will have 6 plus 5 or 11. What about for number 3? That is 2 raised to 3 or 2 cube. 
And that is the same as 2 times 2 times 2. Nako, teka, bakit nga ba? Yung 2, yun yung base. So, siya yung minumultiply sa sarili. Nang ilang beses, depende yun sa exponent. Since ang sabi ng sa exponent, 3, kaya may tatlong 2 dyan. So, 2 times 2, that's 4 times 2. That gives a total of 8. For 4, you have 3 times 5 squared. Ako, sama-sama na. Ano kaya uunahin? Unahin muna daw yung exponent, then multiplication. And then you will have 3 times 5 times 5. And 5 times 5 is 25. That's times 3 times 25 or 75. Now let's try finding the first three terms. Ano kayang ibig sabihin nito? So ito na yung sequence talaga. So yung first term nyo, ay your first general term. General term ang tawag dyan. Uh, ang equation or formula ay 2n minus 3. So, pag sinabi yung first three terms, yung n na yan, yung mga n na yan magbabago. Ano yung pwede niya maging value? Yung n pwedeng maging 1, pwedeng maging 2, pwedeng maging 3. Alin dyan yung gagawin mo? Lahat yan gagawin. So, unayin muna natin. Again, yung n gagawin natin mga 1. Ano mangyayari? So, 2 times 1 minus 3. Magiging 2 minus 3 or negative 1. Next, yung n gagawin nating 2. So, 2 times 2 minus 3, that's 4 minus 3, 1. And, panghuli, yung n ulit, gagawin na naman nating 3. So, 2 times 3 minus 3, magiging 6 minus 3 or 3. That's the whole solution. At, kapag sinamarize, the terms are negative 1, 1, and 3. Pero, meron pa. So, the equation A sub n equals 2n minus 3 will give the sequence negative 1, 1, and 3. Specifically, the first term is negative 1 written as a sub 1 equals negative 1. Tingnan maigi kung saan nakuha yung 1 at saka yung negative 1. Yung 1, yun yung pang ilang term siya. Yung negative 1, yun yung value na nakompute. The second term is 1. So, a sub 2 equals 1. Yung third term is 3, written as a sub 3 equals 3. Again, yung subscript, kung pang ilang term, yung uh, value na kukuha dun sa kinompute. Okay? Next. Okay, the question reads, find the first four terms of the general term which reads a sub n equals 3n squared plus negative 4. This time, n will have four different values and that will be 1, 2, 3, and 4. Kailangan ba sabay-sabay gawin? Siyempre, hindi. Kailangan isa-isa at lahat yan dapat gawin. So, yung lahat daw ng n dun sa general uh, term, babaguhin gagawing uh, 1, then 2, then 3, then 4. For the first one, let's solve for a sub 1. So, lahat daw ng n gagawing 1. So, magiging equals 3 times 1 squared plus negative 4. So, Ano kaya yung unahin? 3 times 1 ba? Yung 1 squared ba? Or yung uh, 1 squared plus negative 4? So, dapat alam natin na yung exponent muna. So, what is 1 squared? That is 3 times 1 plus negative 4. Alam natin dapat na unahin muna yung multiplication, then addition. So, 3 times 1 is 3 plus negative 4 equals negative 1. So, ang tanong, bakit kaya naging negative 1? Eh, plus 1. Di, uh, magkaiba kasi ng sign si 3 tsaka negative 4 kaya dapat isusubtract sila kaninong sign ang kukunin so tingnan mo ngayon yung mga numbers 3 tsaka 4 sino mas mataas di ba yung 4 anong sign niya negative kaya dapat yung sign niya yung kukunin para dun sa sagot kaya naging negative 1 yung final answer now for the second term so change all n to 2 so a sub 2 equals 3 times 2 squared plus negative 4. Again, exponent, then multiply, then add. You will have, uh, what is 2 squared? That is 3 times 4 plus negative 4. What's 3 times 4? That's 12 plus negative 4. And that will become 8. Bakit ulit nag-subtract? 
kasi magkaiba nga sila ng sign. Isang positive 12 at isang negative 4. Kaninong sign ang kukunin? Tingnan mo ulit yung numbers. Yung numbers lang ha, huwag yung sign muna nila. So yung 12 at saka 4, alin ang mas mataas? Yung 12. Anong sign niya? Positive. Kaya yung sagot na 8 magiging positive din. And then the last term, 3. Yung lahat daw ng n gawing uh, 3. So magiging a sub 3 equals 3 times 3 squared plus negative 4. So exponent, multiply, then add. 3 squared is 9. So that's 3 times 9 plus negative 4. 3 times 9 is 27 plus negative 4. And that will become 23. Again, subtraction. So, sa 27 at negative 4, ano ba yung mas mataas yung number? So, yung 27. Ano yung sign niya that is positive? Kaya, positive din si 23. Pero, tatlo pa lang yan. Kailangan natin apat. So, you will have a sub 1 again as negative 1. a sub 2 is 8. a sub 3 is 23. Solution for a sub 4 will be, so, 4 squared. 4 times 4, that is 16. So, 3 times 16 plus negative 4. Then, 3 times 16 is 48 plus negative 4. And subtracting again, dahil magkaiba nga sila ng sign, that will be 44. So, the first four terms are negative 1, 8, 23, and 44. Now, the equation a sub n equals 3n squared plus negative 4 will give the sequence negative 1. 8, 23, and 44. Specifically, the first term is negative 1 written as a sub 1 equals negative 1. The second term is 8 written as a sub 2 equals 8. The third term is 23. So a sub 3 equals 23. And the last term is a sub 4 equals 44. Again, these are just writing notations para ma- intindihan natin or ma-differentiate natin sila sa isa't isa. Yung subscript pang ilang term at yung uh, naka-red, ayun yung mga value na na-compute. Please uh, do not forget that. So this time, for the third problem, find the nth term. So you're given an equation, pero this time you're asked only for one specific term. In this case, the third term. So ano bang... Uh, kakaiba sa mga unang example. Doon kasi sa una, hinanap yung first three terms or first four terms. So, maraming kinocompute. Dito, isa lang ang kinocompute. So, yung pangatlo lang. So, ibig sabihin, yung n magiging 3 lang. Yung n magiging 3 lang. So, lahat daw ng n gagawin nating 3. We will have a sub 3 equals 3 cube plus 3 all over 2 minus 2 times 3. Nako, komplikado tingnan. Pero hindi, isa-isahin natin. Una mo munang tingnan yung numerator. Anin ba yung unang dapat gawin? So, yung exponent. So, 3 cube. Ano bang ibig sabihin ng 3 cube? 3 times 3 times 3. So, ano yung sagot doon? That's 27 plus 3. So, tingnan naman yun natin yung denominator. Anong gagawin? Siyempre, yung times. So, 2 times 3, that's 6. So, yung, de yung denominator magiging 2 minus 6. Then, isosolve separately or uh, gagawin ng magkahiwalay. Ano ba yung 27 plus 3? That's 30. Then, 2 minus 6 is negative 4. Now, this is a fraction. Tandaan natin. Kapag fraction, kapag fraction, palaging nilo lowest term. Ano ba ibig sabihin ng lowest term? Tingnan natin yung 30 at saka 4 or yung negative 4. Meron pa ba silang common factor? Or pwede pa ba natin i-divide sa iisang number? Ang 30 at 4. Meron pa. Ano yon 2. So, divide 30 by 2, that will be 15. And 4, negative 4 divided by 2 will be negative 2. So, the final answer should be 15 over negative 2. Now, for the fourth example, let's have a sub n equals n squared all over 2n plus 3. And you're asked to look for the nth, uh, for the eighth term. Eighth term. So the n will become 8. So lahat daw nung n dun sa equation ay gagawing 8. So a sub 8 equals 8 squared 
all over 2 times 8 plus 3. So, H, so una muna natin gawin. Uh, numerator, 8 squared, 8 times 8, that's 64. All over 2 times 8, that's 16 plus 3. So, 64 over 19. So, again, fraction. Pero meron pa bang common factor ng 64 at 19? Wala na. Kasi 19 is a prime number. So, mga dapat alam natin yun. Uh, pero kung hindi naman, isipin lang natin, meron pa bang pwede ipang divide sa 64 at 19? Most likely, wala. Kailangan isang number lang kasi. Kailangan isang number lang. So, hindi na pwedeng i-lowest term. So, yan na yung sagot. Yan na yung final answer. Ang susunod na tanong nyo, more likely ay, kailangan ba i-mixed uh, fraction? Ang sagot, hindi. Okay na yung ganyan na improper fraction. Parehas lang naman ang value yun, iba lang ang itsura. So, pwede na yan. Uh, and that's it for this lecture. Hope you understood everything. And thank you.